The maintenance wash is arguably one of the most fundamental elements of detailing. It's likely the first thing you'll learn and develop in your journey into the detailing world. Obsessed Garage's owner, Matt Mormon, has a very distinct and effective wash method, so we thought it made sense to break it down into a couple of videos for you to reference. This video specifically will be going over the entire process, so that includes the wheels, the contact wash, and the drying process. Do know that you can use any pressure washer setup and gun configuration for this, uh, and if you need more information about pressure washers and setups, check out the video we did on pressure washers for detailing. Laid out in front of me, I have every tool and chemical that you'll need to complete the wash process, and we'll go through each one of them one by one, explaining what they are and how to use them. We'll go through wheels first, as that's the first step in the wash process and what you'll need for that. In my Pressol bottle and my PF22, I have PNS Brake Buster for our wheel cleaner. And in this Pressol bottle, I have Hide Serum Rust Stopper to prevent our rotors from rusting after we wash the wheels. We have two easy detail brushes, both the small and the large, for cleaning the barrel of the wheel. We have our Increta brush, again, for cleaning the barrel of the wheel if you have smaller rotors and you can actually fit it in there. We have our Race Glaze XL Lug Nut Brush for cleaning the lug nuts. Detail Factory Tire Brush for the tires. And then our Lambskin Mitt for cleaning the faces of the wheels. Moving on to the wash method, we won't need nearly as many tools as the wheels. Right here I have our soap. Today we're using Kosh Kimmy's GSF. You'll need some sort of wash mitt or wash pad. We have the IncrediPad XL from Microfiber Madness. You'll need some sort of foam cannon. This is the PF22 with the new stainless steel quick disconnect on it. And lastly, you'll need some buckets. So we'll be using the buckets from the Obsessed Garage Bucket Solution. And lastly, for the drying method, you'll need some sort of leaf blower. We like Ego's leaf blower with the stubby nozzle. You'll need a drying aid. Today we'll be using Obsessed Garage's drying aid with two towels. We have our low pile drying aid towel and then our high pile drying aid towel. You'll also need some tire dressing. We're using OG's tire dressing today and the Detail Factory curveball brush to apply it. Lastly, you'll want a small towel to buff down those tires after you put the tire dressing on. Now that you know every chemical and tool that you'll need, we can take it outside and get started on the wheels. Okay, so we're outside, we have our car, we have our wheel bucket with all of our tools, and then we have our pressure washer set up and ready to go. Uh, something worth mentioning, the wheel bucket does not have any water in it. Uh, it's just basically a storage for our tools. So when we use them, we'll spray them off. This is the first step of the wash process. So we haven't sprayed any of the car and you don't want to spray any of the car until you're ready to wash the paint. So we're only doing the wheels. We're only spraying the wheels right now. That's basically just to avoid any sort of water spots or anything like that. So first step, we'll take our pressure washer and then rinse off our wheels. All right, now our wheel is rinsed. That's basically to get off of any of the uh, heavy dirt and stuff before we actually touch the wheel. Uh, I know that this is going to dilute the brake cleaner that we're about to use, but we really don't care because as long as the rims aren't super caked in brake dust and grime, the wheel cleaner is effectively just a lubricant so we don't scratch the wheels. So I'll take my nozzle off and I will get my foam cannon with Brake Buster, and then we'll foam this wheel down. Foaming the wheels isn't exactly necessary, uh, but it does provide a lot more coverage, and honestly, it's just a lot more fun than using a spray bottle. If you don't have access to a foam cannon, you can. Uh, clean your wheels with just a spray bottle. You'll just want to make sure that you get even coverage on the tire, the rim, and in the barrels as well. So let's jump right in and get started on hands-on cleaning the wheels. First step, I'll take my Increta brush and we'll uh, clean out these barrels. So I'm just going to wet it down first. And I can get behind these spokes. Now, when I'm cleaning the barrel of the rim, I'm not really applying a ton of pressure. We're not scrubbing the rim, we're just wiping the rim down. There we go. And now we can move on to the lugs. So I'll get my race glaze brush out. Again, wetting it down. And then we'll get in here and clean these lugs out one by one. 
Now the intricate areas are done, we can get our lambskin mitt and then clean the faces. Get a good grip on it. All right, I'll start on the outside of the rim just to get that recessed edge and then work my way in. Focusing on areas like the valve stem, making sure I'm touching every surface of the face and then I'll move on to each spoke. So getting the face, both sides and the backs. And then we'll take our bottle of brake buster, spray a little bit on the tires. We'll get our detail factory tire brush. Again, wet it down real quick. Now that we know that our whole wheel and wheel well is clean, we can rinse this off. So we just finished cleaning all four of the wheels. Uh, I would recommend checking out the video we did on the wheels specifically. Uh, we're ready to move on to the contact wash itself. Uh, so before we can touch the paint or do anything, we do have some prep work to do in the garage. So let's take it in there and get our buckets ready. So we have our two buckets right here, our soap, and our foam cannon, as well as our bucket filler. So we're gonna fill our rinse bucket, prepare our foam cannon. We'll take it outside, rinse the car down, and then we'll come back and fill our wash bucket. We actually have our bucket filler set to the perfect height to uh, fill up our wash buckets. So I'll take my GSF and we can get our foam cannon ready. And you'll see why we do the rinse bucket first in just a moment. So we'll put about 150 milliliters of GSF into our foam cannon. We've done it enough that we can kind of eyeball it, but we do offer some measuring cups and things on the website if you are concerned with having the perfect ratio. We'll take this and use our rinse bucket to fill the foam cannon bottle. There we go. And a little tip, never screw the head onto the bottle. Always screw the bottle onto the head. That way you avoid cross threading. All right. We'll take this outside, rinse the car, foam the car, and then we'll come back and fill our wash bucket. Before we use our foam cannon, we're going to want to do a pretty thorough and extensive initial rinse. You'll notice I'm washing from top down and I'm especially focusing on troubled areas like the bottom of the car, the front bumper and the back bumper. All right. Our rinse is done, now I can grab my foam cannon and we'll foam the car down. Make sure it's turned all the way up and you start foaming. Now the car is foamed, we can go back inside and get our wash bucket ready to go. Okay, we have our foam dwelling on the car so we can get our wash bucket ready. This gives us enough time to let the foam sit on the car and basically do its work while we get you know, everything else ready to go. So I'll take my wash mitt and I'll apply my soap to the wash mitt itself. Just gonna give it a little drizzle of soap. And put this in the bottom of our bucket and then we'll use our bucket filler again. Use my ultimate bucket filler nozzle to agitate that and get the foam. And you'll see how quickly this fills up. And then, depending on how big your car is, you'll probably have some foam or some soap left over in your foam cannon. So we'll take this off and dump the rest into the bucket. That way we're not wasting any soap. We'll take this outside and uh, get into the contact wash. So from here, it's pretty simple. All we gotta do is wash the car, starting from top down, going panel by panel, and you know, use your judgment. You wanna start with the least dirty sections and then work your way down to the most dirty sections. So I'll kinda walk you through that process right now. 
some soap on the pad and I'll start with the roof moving in straight directions so north south east to west no circles because that's how we induce swirls so I'll do the roof back glass I'll flip this over to the fresh side I'll do a pillar and the glass right here another thing worth mentioning is I'm not pushing into the pad or scrubbing I'm basically just holding it on the surface so don't push but don't have your fingertips because you don't want it to fall on the ground or anything All right. rinse get some more soap and I'll do the front glass now your rinse bucket and your wash bucket are there to be used so don't be afraid to do a really small area or revisit the rinse bucket as many times as you need to you know they're there for you know to be used and the more you use your rinse and wash bucket the safer you're being you know theoretically and now i'll move on to my doors and my mirrors i like to divide these up into about midway down the door and below so i'll use the one side of the mitt for the top half get my door handle right there I'll flip it over and do the bottom section. Also, while we're here, we're gonna pop the car door open and just hit our door jams. And then right on the door right there. You don't have to worry about getting water or soap in the car. All of that's going to get blown out whenever we do our final rinse. It's another thing worth mentioning that this is a baseline or a demonstration of how we wash a car. Uh, you can adapt this or change it to whatever works best for you. So if your car isn't really that dirty, you might not have to revisit the uh, rinse and wash bucket as much. On the other hand, if it's incredibly dirty, you might even refill your rinse and wash bucket halfway through. You might revisit it on every panel. It's uh, very subjective. As long as you're being safe, you're using quality products, quality wash media, you'll be fine. Roof is done, sides of the car are done, hood is done. All we really have left is the front and rear bumper as well as the trunk lid and spoiler. We like to do the front bumper and the rear bumper last, specifically the front bumper last, as that's probably the dirtiest part of the car and we wanna keep all that dirt and contaminant off of our wash mitt. It's not rocket science, people. You're just washing the car. At the very bottom. All right. All righty. That is our hands-on washing done. Now, before this soap dries, we're going to want to get our pressure washer and rinse it off. Make sure we get no soap spots, water spots, anything like that. Again, we'll follow the same process as we did in our initial rinse, top to bottom, working all that soap down off of the car. Okay, with our final rinse done, we are fully done and complete with the contact wash. Uh, so we're ready to ego blow this car and then pull it inside and finish out the drying process. The first step in that process is to take our ego blower and blow as much water off as we can. So we're just gonna start from the top, blow it down. This isn't rocket science, just take your blower and blow as much water off as you can. Okay, we have 90% of the water blown off the car with our ego blower and we're ready to pull it inside and start applying drying aid. Uh, but before we do that, I'm going to apply some Hyde Serum Rust Stopper to our brake rotors just so they don't get any of that surface rust. So we'll do one spray right there. We'll hit our three other rotors. And uh, if you're worried about full coverage, uh, we're gonna pump the brakes a few times before we pull it into the garage. So that's not something you need to be worried about.
cars inside, we are ready to start applying our drying aid. Uh, if you don't know what this is or you just want a little more information about it, we have an entire video dedicated to just drying aid that I would recommend checking out. But for simplicity's sakes, we're going to go panel by panel, spraying just a little bit, and then we'll take our two towels. So we have our high pile and our low pile. Uh, high pile is the first one. This is to get the majority of it off. So we'll go over the panel and then we'll follow up with our low pile. This is to level it down and make sure we don't get any streaks or anything and it's fully dry. Same philosophy applies as you're washing. You're going to start with the top surfaces and uh, less dirty areas and then work your way down, finally ending on the front bumper. If you were worried about your door jam still being wet, we'll actually go in with the drying aid and touch those areas up as well. All right, so we'll continue around the entire car and then we'll meet back up to do our tire dressing and then finish this out. Okay, so the car has been fully washed, fully dried. We just finished up the drying aid. Uh, so now we're on to our last step, which is to apply some Fisk Garage tire dressing to the tires. So I'll get my curveball brush, spray a little bit in there, and then we can apply this all over the tire. Now I'm going to apply some tire dressing to the other three tires and then we'll come back and buff it off to a matte finish with our towel. Once your tires are buffed down to the finish that you're looking for, uh, you are completely done with the wheels. And that concludes the entire maintenance wash process. I know this can be a little bit intimidating at first, but as long as you're using quality products and an effective method, uh, you really shouldn't have any problems. You can get every product we showed in this video at obsessedgarage.com. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out in the comments or directly at support at